Greetings, this is Professor Brian Lazarus and today we will talk about the cash flow statement, also called the statement of cash flows. I have provided a simplified sample format of the cash flow statement here by my side and we'll go through that and get a better appreciation and an understanding of this important document. So you start off at the top by identifying the company name. I have taken the liberty of putting my company there, Lazarus Global Business Solutions. The next line identifies this document as the statement of cash flows. Then third, we have a time reference. In this case, the time reference says that this cash flow statement is prepared for the month ended March 31st. The time reference is important because it helps to put all of the numbers in the proper context because even before you start looking at the numbers, you know that the information you're about to look at is for a one month period. Now the cash flow statement is broken out into three broad sections. The first one is the operating activity section, then you have the investing activity section, and finally you have the financing activity section. There are also two different methods for preparing the cash flow statement, the direct method and the indirect method. So what's the difference then between the two methods? Well, the main difference between the two methods is in the operating activity section. The way we calculate the numbers in the operating activity section is different under the two methods. However, the remaining two sections, the investing activities and the financing activity section, those two sections are identical in all respects under both the methods. So how do we know when we have a cash transaction, how do we know which of the three sections it goes into? Well, let me give you some broad guidelines and run through some numbers in our sample statement here. Let's take the first section, the operating activity section. The broad guideline here is if a cash transaction affects your revenues or your expenses, then we would tend to classify that in the operating activity section. Now here in this example, under the operating activities, we have cash collected from our customers in the amount of $450. And then below that we have another item, cash paid to vendors for $400. So between the two, when you combine it, we end up having a $50 cash inflow from the operating activity section. So we have a $450 cash inflow, a $400 cash outflow that results in a net inflow of $50 from your operating activity section. Then the next section we have is the investing activities. What goes in here? Again, a broad guideline as to what goes in here would be purchase or sale of your long-term assets or any investments, long-term investments. So in, in a, as an example here, I have one item that says cash from sale of land. Cash from sale of land, $1,000. So in this case, since this is the only item, we end up with a $1,000 inflow from our investing activity section. Then we have the financing activity section. What would be the broad guideline as to what goes in here? Transactions that affect your long-term debt as well as your equity accounts would be classified in your financing activity section. We have one item mentioned here, cash from loans. This is cash that you received from taking a loan in the amount of $150. So since this is the only item here, we have a cash inflow of $150 from the financing activity section. So when you add up all of these numbers, you end up with $1,200 of cash inflow coming in this month from the three sections combined. Now below that, I said, let's assume that you had started off the month with a $20 cash balance. So if you started off the month with a $20 cash balance and you received $1,200 during the month net between your inflows and your outflows, then you'll end up with a ending cash balance of $1,220. So this is a simplified version of the cash flow statement with some information about the different sections to help you better appreciate and understand the cash flow statement. So when you go back to your textbooks and look at a more detailed format, hopefully you can take some of these guidelines that I've shared with you and that would help you better appreciate and understand a much more detailed cash flow statement. 
Again, this is Professor Brian Lazarus uh, signing off, and I hope you found this information useful. And as I always like to say, we accountants work our assets off.